जय राम सुंदर भगवान की जय जगन्नाथ बाल
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथे नष्टा प्राय शिव भद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवय भागवत उत्तम श्लोकी भक्ति भवती नैष्टिके स्वागत श्री राधाकृष्ण पुण्य सुनम कृतम जगन्धो Thank you so much. So we are starting a fresh chapter, new chapter today. The first verse, Vyasa Vacha. 
इति संपर्शना समाहिस्तो विप्रानाम रोमहर्षनिहि प्रतिपूज्या वचस्ते शम प्रवक्तुम उपचक्रमे व्यासु वाचा इति संपर्शना समाहिस्तो विप्रानाम रोमहर्षनि परितु पूज्या वचस्ते शम परवक्तुम उपचक्रमे व्यासु वाचा इति संपर्शना समाहिस्तो विप्रानाम रोमहर्षनि प्रतिपूज्या वचस्ते शम परवक्तुम उपचक्रमे शो वर्ड बाय वर्ड मीनिंग व्यासु वाचा व्यासा सेद इति दस संपर्शना perfect inquiry samsristaha perfectly satisfied vipranam of the sages there ramaharshani the son of ramaharshana namely ugrishrava pratipujaya after thanking them vachaha words tesham there pravaktum to reply to them upachakrame attempted Translation by His Divine Grace, Shri Bhakti Vyanta Swami Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai Ugrishrava Chuta Goswami. The son of Ramaharshana, being fully satisfied by the perfect questions of the Brahmans, thanked them and thus attempted to reply. Purport. The series of Naimish Sarani asked Chuta Goswami six questions and so he is answering them one by one. So just to give some broader context, We'll read the purport of uh, second verse also. Sri Sutta Goswami said, starting from translation, let me offer my respectful obeisances unto that great sage Sukhdev Goswami who can enter the hearts of all. When he, won, he, went, when he went away to take up the renounced order of life, Shanyas, leaving home without undergoing reformation by the sacred thread or the ceremonies observed by the higher caste, his father, Vyasadeva, fearing separation from him, cried out, Oh my son, indeed, only the trees which were absorbed in the same feelings of separation occurred in response to the begrieved father. Purport. The institution of Barna and Ashram prescribes many regulative duties to be observed by its follower. Such duties enjoin that a candidate willing to study the Veda must approach a bona fide spiritual master and request acceptance as his disciple. The sacred thread is the sign of those who are competent to study the Veda from the Acharya or the bona fide spiritual master. Sri Sukhdev Goswami did not undergo such purificatory ceremonies because he was a liberated soul from his very birth. Generally, a man is born as an ordinary being, and by the purificatory process, he is born for the second time when he sees a new light and seeks direction for a spiritual progress. He approaches a spiritual master for instruction in the Vedas. The spiritual master accepts only the sincere inquirer as his disciple and gives him the sacred thread. In this way, a man becomes twice born. Or a dvija. After qualifying as a dvija, one may study the Veda, and after becoming well versed in the Veda, one becomes a vipra. A vipra or a qualified Brahman thus realizes the absolute and makes further progress in the spiritual life until he reaches the Vaishnava stage. The Vaishnava stage is the postgraduate status of a Brahman. A progressive Brahman must necessarily become, say, Vaisnav, necessarily become a Vaisnav. For a Vaisnav, for a Vaisnav is a self-realized learned Brahman. Sri Sukhdev Goswami was a Vaisnav from the beginning. Therefore, there was no need for him to undergo all the process of Banasram institution. Ultimately, the aim of Banasram is to turn a crude man into a pure devotee of the Lord or a Vaisnav. Anyone, therefore, who becomes a Vaisnav, accepted by the first class Vaisnav or 
Uttamadhikari Vaishnava is already considered a Brahman, regardless of his birth or past deeds. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted these principles and recognized Sri Haridas Thakur as the Acharya of the Holy Name. Although Haridas Thakur, Thakur Haridas appeared in a Muhammadan family. In conclusion, Sri Asukdeva Goswami was born a Vaishnava and therefore Brahminism was included in him. He did not have to undergo any ceremonies, any low-born person. B. He Kirata, Huna, Andhra, Kulinda, Kulaska, Abhira, Shumbha, Yavan, Khasha, or even lower can be delivered to the highest transcendental position by the mercy of Vaishnavas. Sila Sukhdeva Goswami was the spiritual master of Sila Sukhdeva Goswami, who therefore offers his respectful obeisances unto Sila Sukhdeva Goswami before he begins his answer to the questions of the sages at Naimi Sharanya. Okay. So let me share my another screen. So you can you see it? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> so we'll get into the discussion. Before that, I would like to offer uh Mangala Charan prayers my pronouns to disciple succession. O Magyana Timiran Dasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Shakshulan Tanjana Tasma Siri Guru Namaha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangam Langate Grim El Pirvata Dham Bandhu Siri Guru Jana Sarin Pramananda Mahatam Sri Chaitanya Ishwaram Namaham Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanto Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesh Sunyavadi Pashat Deshatarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityanando Sri Advaita Gadada Siva Sadi Gauru Bhakti Vindo Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, so I welcome you all to our Saturday morning program. Thank you all for uh, who has join the program this should be part of our life nityam bhagavat sevayam you know every day every time every day whenever we get the opportunity we have to serve bhagavatam by serving bhagavatam one day devotee who are serving bhagavatam becomes bhagavatam that's the process that's the process very simple process so <clears throat> uh, this was the um, verse the very first verse under chapter Oh, very beautiful uh, chapter, Divinity and Divine Service. Such a beautiful title of the chapter. Okay, so as usual, we are going to summarize the purport, and after summarization, we'll get into the discussion. So there was nothing much in the purport, uh, in the first purport, where <clears throat> it has been said that uh, Sutta Goswami is continuing his discussion. So we read purport two, and there was many, you know, powerful point made there. So we'll take that purport as a kind of a foundation precursor for our discussion today. <clears throat> so in that purport, there is basically mention about Barnasra institution. So we'll get into the discussion, but let us summarize the purport. It says that Sukha, Goswami, Sukhdeva Goswami, did not undergo through any purificatory ceremonies. And what is that ceremony? Somebody takes birth as an ordinary man. And then he, by the mercy of <clears throat> Vaishna or by associating with a bona fide disciplic succession, he takes Diksha. Then he becomes twice born and then 
under the guidance of the spiritual master, he takes proper education. And then by taking the proper education, he becomes a qualified Brahman, which is called Vipra. Okay. And then by continuing that process, one day he comes to a stage of Brahma Bhuta, a self-realized person. And that stage is called Vaisna. A learned Brahmin is uh, Vaisna. So that's the basically purificatory process. But Sukhdeva Goswami did not go through that process. So we'll read why. Why he didn't go through the process? Because he was a Vaisnava from his birth. So for him, there was no need to follow the Barnasram institution. He does not have to go through the purificatory process. Rather, he was by birth a Vaisna. Perfect. Ultimately, the aim of Barnasram Dharma is to turn a crude man into a pure devotee of a Lord. So the essence of the Barnasram is that, that <clears throat> A crude man turns into pure devotee of the Supreme Lord. And then example is given that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was on this planet, he accepted Silaharidas Thakur as the Acharya. Acharya of the Harinam. Right? We say that, you know, Harinam Acharya. Haridas Thakur. Although he was born into a Mohammedan family. So very clear, very very clear and very, you know, concise example that uh, <clears throat> Haridas Thakur, who was born in a different religious system, not even, not even, you know, you know, in so-called, you know, Barnasram system, he was out of the Barnasram system. He was not part of the Barnasram system. So that's the thing we have to understand. When we call about the Barnasram system, it's, it's still very, very exalted stage, but. As per here, we are seeing that Haridas Thakur was not part of the Barnasram system, but he has taken the deeper shelter of the holy name and he, he is called as you know, Harinam Acharya, Acharya of the holy name, Haridas Thakur. And then the purport summarized that anyone, any low born person, so these are the person who are not in the Barnasram system. So this point to be noted. These are the names of the names here who are out of Barnasram system, such as Kirata, Huna, Andhra, Pulinda, Pula, uh, Pulakska, Avira, Shumbha, Yavana, Khasha, or even lower, Chandala, and you know, Pancham, and Kastam, and Saptam, and you know, Sila Prabhupada, as in one of his lecture, very clearly you know, uh, said, what are these Pancham, Kastam, Saptam, and Astam? You know, it goes all the way up to like 10 stages starting from those fourth, four, uh, you know, varnas. So doesn't matter you know, even if one is born out of uh, varna, out of ashram, by mercy of a pure Vaishnav, one can be elevated to the highest stage. So that's the discussion we'll do. So let me summarize what I would like to talk today. So we just had the summary of the purport, and then we'll have some introductory, you know, kind of uh, statements to give the foundation. And then uh, since this is a uh, second chapter, we just started, I would like to give you the summary of the second chapter. And then, then before we get into the <coughs> discussion, we'll talk, what are the qualifications? of becoming the human being at first place. If you want to become human being, what exactly qualification? We, because, because that's something we need to know. And then we'll try to understand the scientific social structure, which is Barnasram, and why I'm using this word. I will talk about that. And then what is the aim of the uh, social structure? <clears throat> we'll summarize that, and then we'll basically uh, conclude. So, Varnasram Dharma is a very, very, you know, I would say that a critical topic. It's a very sensitive topic also. And uh, <clears throat> there have been a uh, lot of discussion about this 
topic. And even in our organization, there are various kind of, uh, you know, approach or various, uh, you know, ways of understanding this. So there are some conflict, but overall, this whole Barnasam system is um, very, 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 you know, basically confusing because this system uh, has been completely taken in a wrong, you know, uh, connotation. And uh, depends where you talk. Sometimes this could become very, very detrimental to, to, to basically talk about, you know, this system. So, so we'll basically uh, not get into the very in depth of that because in our scripture, there are so many places. In fact, in Canto 11, and I think in Canto 4, I believe, uh, there are chapters, you know, chapters, you know, which are very, you know, uh, extensively talking about uh, Varnasram Dharma. So there will be chapters and chapters dedicated. And once we get uh, <clears throat> to those chapters, we will basically uh, talk about this and then get into the deeper meaning of uh, this system. But today what I would like to do is that just share the purpose of it, just introduce the topic and uh, give you a broader kind of, you know, purpose of it. And then as we come along, we'll have a deeper discussion on this topic. So Varnasram, you know, is basically, of course, a very powerful uh, topic and we'll see some of the discussion later on. So this chapter, the next slide that I have is a summary of uh, this chapter. So we just finished the first uh, chapter. And in the first chapter, there were six questions asked by sages of Naimi Saranya. Out of those six, first four questions are answered in uh, this chapter. And then some of the uh, answer of the third question about Pushadar begins in third chapter, and then third chapter inserts rest uh, two of the questions. So total six questions have been answered in uh, second chapter and third chapter. First chapter is basically Sages asking the question. So can anybody tell what was the first question that Sages asked? What is the ultimate good yeah. for what human is, society? What is the ultimate good for human society? What is the ultimate good for human society? So they asked six questions. The first one was, what is for the ultimate good of human society? The second one was, what is the essence of, you know, uh, Vedic Dharma, especially the, you know, uh, literatures? And then third one, they asked, why Lord Krishna incarnated as son of Devki and Vasudev. And then the fourth one they ask, what are the different you know, incarnation of the Supreme Personality of God, especially the Pusha Avatars? So those four questions uh, we are going to uh, deal with in this chapter. And then the fifth one about the Lila Avatar and sixth one where ultimately the religious principle is going to take shelter when Lord will depart this material world. Those two are going to be answered in uh, third chapter. So one to seven verse, basically Sutta Goswami is replying and he is, you know, paying, you know, he's paying obeisances. He's appreciating, he's appreciating the, the sages. And then uh, question one and two is answered in verse number six and seven. Then from eight to 15, only bhakti to be gained by one's prescribed work, Sudha Goswami is basically, once he has answered the bhakti, because the answer of uh, first and second question lies in bhakti. Bhakti is the ultimate good for all being, all human being. And a sense of all the Vedic, <clears throat> I know, studies and literature is that one should come to the point of bhakti. So then eight, from eight to 15, the bhakti process has been, uh, <clears throat> Uh, explained and it continues until verse number 22. Then 33 to 29, uh, it's emphasized on Krishna's worship. Only Krishna is to be worshipped. And then 30, 30 and 33 answers the question four. And finally, we wrap up uh, by answering the uh, 
uh, questions of thesis about who are uh, push avatars. So this is basically a brief summary of uh, this chapter. So here is basically a beautiful bar, you know, beautiful, yes, I mean, essence of the verse. And this is coming from uh, Seven Canto, chapter 11, verse number eight to 12. And here we have 30 qualification of becoming a human being is mentioned. Okay, so, so as you can see, there, there is a lot of expectation from human being. Just, you know, by <clears throat> taking the birth in the human form, all of these uh, qualities are expected. So what I would like to basically do is that uh, I'm gonna read it. I would like to read it because this is important that we at least hear the quality that is expected from us. At the, at the same time, you know, please, you know, if you are reading and you are trying to look over it, please do that. So truthfulness, mercy, austerity, bathing twice a day, tolerance, discrimination, control of the mind, control of the senses, nonviolence, celibacy, charity, reading of a scripture, simplicity, satisfaction, rendering service to a saintly person, gradually taking leave of unnecessary engagements, observing the futility of the unnecessary activity of the human society, remaining silent and grave and avoiding unnecessary talk, considering whether one is the body or the soul, distributing food equally to all living entity, both men and animal, seeing every soul, especially in the human form as a part of the Supreme Soul, hearing about the activity and instructions given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, chanting about these activities and instructions, always remembering these activities and instructions, trying to render service, performing worship, offering obeisances, becoming a servant, becoming a friend, surrendering one's whole self. These 30 qualifications must be acquired in the human form of life, my dear devotees. Please look at it. These are not the 26 quality of Vaishnava. Okay, this is this. We have in the 26. We have you know. I think uh, it was verse number seven or eight where I had one slide where we went over 26 quality of Vaishnava. We are not talking about the qualities of Vaishnava. We are not talking about <laughs> something you know uh, much higher. You know that these are the quality of the sannyasa or you know the other quality of the brahmachari. These are the qualities of becoming a human being. So there are a lot of expectations <clears throat> from us as a uh, human being. So with that expectation, now I would like to basically get into the <clears throat> Varnasaram talk. So that basically slide should give us the foundation that what is expected. When we are talking Sudra, we should not be, we should not be thinking, oh, Sudra, no, you have to know that Sudha is also a human being. That means Sudha also should have those qualities. That's, that's what this slide said. It's not, it's not something that I'm telling you. It says that these 30 qualifications must be acquired in the human form of the life. That's what we have to do. So types of Varnasram, there are uh, you know, many ways these types have been uh, presented. Sometimes you will hear two types, sometimes you, you will hear three types, you know, some, you know, the three types is basically your Asura, uh, Asura Varnasram, and then Vedic Varnasram, and then Daivik Varnasram. But what I'm going to do is that I'm just, to keep it simple, I'm going to present that Varnasram are two types. One is Asmarta Varnasram. <clears throat> the traditional context, the traditional, you know, Varnasram system that we see in our society, especially in the Indian uh, society, in the Indian tradition, which is now has become very, very abusive and have, you know, uh, basically turned into a caste system. So, so that's how also the Barnasram system has, the word Barnasram system has been completely, completely taken in the wrong connotation because of when we look at the Indian worst caste system. So that's also called Asura, Asura Barnasram or for, for just clarity and for giving a good name, let's call it Asmarta Varnasram. So that Varnasram system is basically based on birth. That's what the understanding is. 
that Varnasram system, the Asura Varnasram system is based upon birth and it's a very rigid system. It's a very rigid system. What does it mean? It means that if somebody has born in the family of Shudra, he is Shudra and he will remain Shudra. That's, that's how you know, the Asura Varnasram system has basically taken over. But then there is other part that, that is Daivik Varnasram system. And Daivik Varnasram system is a scientific setup to manage the society. And why we have to manage the society? We have to manage the society so that holistically everybody can progress towards devotional service. Everybody slowly and slowly can come to the stage where they can take the bhakti, especially the bhakti of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Hari. So that type of scientific structure, that scientific social structure is Daivik Varnasram system. <clears throat> And then I have some picture here showing that, that everybody take birth with their psychophysical nature. We, we, we cannot basically ignore that that Banasam system naturally exists into the society. So if somebody wants to ignore it, it's not, it's not acceptable or it's not something that even you know should be attempted because it's 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 not possible it exists it exists you know people take birth based upon <clears throat> their you know their karmas in the previous life previous life of course karmas and they have some some tendencies so they come with some tendencies so other either you call it or not call it but it exists, it exists. That's something, you know, we have to understand that it exists, it prevails into the society. Now, you call it or not call it, that is different system. So what Daivik Varnasam does is that it accepts, it accepts that yes, this is a reality, it exists into the society and then it starts working from there. So next, you know, we'll read a <clears throat> beautiful, uh, verse that Krishna is, uh, you know, uh, uh, sharing with Arjuna. Chaturvarna Maya, you know, system, all of you know that. Guna Karma Vibhag Saha Tasya Kartaram Apimam Vidhi Akartaram Avayam. So, Chaturvarnam Maya system. Krishna is saying that this Chaturvarna, which is basically known as Brahmin, Chatriya, Vaishya and Shudra, these are my, my Srishti. Now, how you can, what you can do about it? Krishna is saying that, that, you know, uh, this is my, my, you know, Srishti. It's my creation. But, but what he's saying that, Guna Karma Vibhag Shaha. It is based upon the Guna. Guna is basically quality and Karma is activity. It's based upon the quality and activity of the being. So it's not based upon what Asmarta Varnasaram system thinks that it's based upon the birth. Rather, it's based upon the guna and quality. So what that does is that when we hear the definition of Krishna about Varnasaram, then it gives a very clear and solid you know, understanding that yes, now it's basically not a rigid system, but it's a flexible system, which means that Shudra has, Shudra have opportunity based upon their guna and karma to proceed to Bashya, to move to our Chatriya, you know, and ultimately become Brahmin because this, this quality can change. So, so that, that gives, you know, you know, kind of broader perspective on the Banasram. And then Ashram is basically, the ashram comes from the word ashraya, where one is situated and situated, taking shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So in all these four ashram, one has taken the shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, such as sannyasa, banprastha, grihastha, and brahmachari. So these are the four varna and four uh, ashram. And you can see 
that what I have done is that uh, I just created another column to compare where this uh, Varna and Ashram belongs when we compare with the Lord's Rupa. So we just, we were studying a few days back. I think we're still studying, you know, Birat Rupa and the whole material world is basically compared with the different limbs of the Birat Rupa, which is Pusha Avatar, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Likewise, Brahmin, Chatriya, Vaisya and Sudra, they are also compared with different uh, <clears throat> uh, limb of the Birat Rupa, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One thing we have to understand that when we say Birat Rupa, Sometimes people end up saying that this is a material form. None of the form of Krishna is a material form. Please be aware. Krishna is all spiritual. There is nothing like, you know, him coming to the material world doesn't make it material. So we should never say that, you know, Birat Rupa and, and, and the people out there, there are many people who say that the Birat Rupa is material understanding. Yes, it's material understanding of the Krishna, but the form, form is still spiritual. The form is still the same Supreme Personality of Godhead to to manifest the material world has expanded in, into, uh, into his Birat Rupa. So, so the form is still a spiritual, same Krishna's form. So, you know, you can see there how the Brahmin, Satriya, Vaisya, and Sudras are compared. Sudras are compared with the Lord's feet. Vaisya with thighs, Satriya with arms, and Brahmin with uh, mouth. Likewise, Sanyasa with head, Van Prastha with chest, Grasta thighs, and Brahmachari heart. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that feet is less important than mouth or, or chest. And this is a very wrong understanding that we have in our Hindu you know, culture, Hindu society. They will take these reference and they will say that, see, you know, Brahmin has come from mouth. Brahmin has come from the upper part of the, you know, Lord limb. So they are higher than the Sudra. But that's not true. The, 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 the fact is that, that in your body, can we cut the feet out? Can we take the you know, one part out and say that, you know, that part is, you know, inferior, so take it out? It's not. It's not possible. Especially when it's compared to Lord's Birat Rup. Lord Birat, I mean, can you see that the Lord has, Lord feet has less significant than Lord's, you know, uh, uh, face? No. See how much prayers we have, you know, our, our charyas have done to Lord's feet. When we have, when we have, when we are taking the uh, darshan of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we start from his feet and then slowly and slowly we go up. So, so these things as a aspiring devotee, when we get the opportunity to talk to people, we have to present that in a very factual way. We don't have to be shy. Rather, we have to teach and we have to tell people that this understanding, that mouth, or chest or arm superior than feet is not good, especially when it comes to the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, okay? So that is why this, this structure is a, why we are using the word scientific structure because Bhakti Bhima Thakur said this is, a, this is a scientific, you know, system because this exists and this existence one has to understand. And the understanding is that that all of them have equal importance because they are based upon the guna and karma of the living being. So, so there are some prescribed duties for each, uh, I know, varna. So I'm just going to read through it very quickly. Uh, for Brahmin, it says that peaceful, self-control, austerity, purity, tolerance, honesty, wisdom, knowledge, and religiousness. These are the qualities by which the Brahmina works, Brahmin works, okay? Pretty good. Heroism, power, determination, resourcefulness, courage in battle, generosity, and leadership are the quality by which Kshatriya works, okay? So they have their qualities and then their activities. Farming, cow protection, and business are the qualities of Bashya and for the Sudra, there is labor and service to other. So all of these are based upon guna and karma. Guna and karma. And that is why all of them have very critical importance in our society. We cannot, we cannot, you know, basically say one is uh, prevailing over other. And here, 
is a basically slide that uh, summarize this in a very simple way. They say that you know one picture is worth thousand words. So what we are seeing in the society today, especially in Hindu uh, tradition, the Varnasram has taken the form like this. Very very distorted understanding of the uh, this uh, this scientific socialist structure, which is detrimental for everybody. Why? Because it's not, it's not doing the purpose. It's not letting people progress towards Supreme Lord. And here is the example you can see that one man is trying to move up, but then he has a load and then somebody is on the top of the load trying to suppress it, suppress it. And that's what the Hindu caste system is. The caste system is basically suppressing. It's, it's based upon the principle of suppression. But that's not the intent of the Barnasam system is. The intent of the Barnasam system is what in the second picture, that everybody, everybody is working collectively. Everybody is working together to move up, move up. And yes, in that process, one may be in front, in that process, one may be in the back, but that doesn't matter. Everybody is slowly and slowly, slowly and slowly, slowly and slowly progressing and do, you know, going towards bhakti yoga, coming to the point where one can fully situate in the bhakti. And that is why we saw, you know, in the purport, Prabhupada is saying, the ordinary man, ordinary man can fall into any of this category and that's okay. But then after that, he becomes twice born. He becomes twice born means he take Diksha by <clears throat> bona fide spiritual master. And then he start practicing the bhakti process. And by doing that, he comes to the stage of Brahman. And we go through that. We have first initiation. Then we take the second initiation to become Brahmin. And then after that, you know, one comes to the stage of uh, Vaishnava. And then once we come to the stage of Vaishnava, then this Barnasram system doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. And very simple example can be given that when you throw something with the, you know, escape velocity, then once it crosses the gravitational field of the earth, then it's not going to be pulled by the gravitational force. Rather, it will continue going. So, this Bhattasam system is basically designed to push, push this gravitational force, this hurdle that as an ignorant human being, we have thinking that we are this body, thinking that, that we have this responsibility, we have that responsibility and trying to connect ourselves with all of that responsibility and with that responsibility what happens is that it becomes too heavy that we plunge we we submerge in that responsibility and we forget what is our goal what is the essence of our human form so this barnasam system is basically designed to collectively work together to push against that to push to push against that hurdle which is sinking us down and go up and slowly and slowly, slowly and slowly come to the stage of Brahman realization, come to the stage of Brahman Bhuta. And this part, and that is why the, the, the Vedic Barnasram in Hindu society was developed or it was established because the intent was to everybody, wherever they are, they need to progress and they can come, they need to come to the stage of uh, best not platform come to the stage of Brahm Bhuta stage, but it got completely diluted and completely, you know, out of, uh, you know, connotation, completely, completely in the wrong direction. So I want to basically emphasize that all of us who are hearing this and who are studying this, whenever this thing comes, we have to very strongly present this with the scientific understanding that this system is not to basically categorize and degrade the people, rather, to work together to come to the higher stage of consciousness. So the second picture is what the intent of the Barnasram, not the 
first picture. And here is the you know uh, slide that I would like to conclude at. So Atta Puma Bhira Duja Sresta Varnasan Bivhagsa Shwanuti Sthanu Dharmasya Samsidhir Hari Toshnam. So this verse is coming from uh, this chapter, verse number 13, and we'll come to that verse. But that verse very, you know, uh, nicely tells us what is the purpose of Banasram. Atha Puma Bhir Dvija Sreshta. Dvija Sreshta, twice born. Sreshta, Sreshta of the, uh, you know, twice born. So it is basically a Vaishna. <coughs> Varnasanam vibhagsa shvanuti sthanu dharmasya samshri dhari tesnam. So there is, there is vibhaga, there is, there is divisions and division is based upon varna and asram. But what this verse is saying, shvanu tisthasya dharmasya, shvanu tisthasya dharmasya, wherever one is, wherever one is, doesn't matter where we are, if one is going to perform dharma. What is the dharma? Dharma to sakshat bhagavata pranita. Dharma is basically established by supreme personality of Godhead. So wherever we are on that vibhaga, if we start following the dharma, for what? Samsidhir hari toshnam. Toshnam means satisfaction. Hari means Lord Sri Hari for the satisfaction of Lord Sri Hari. So whatever Barna, whatever ashram we have, if we start following the instructions of Supreme Personality of Godhead for the pleasure of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then that's what we have to do. Doesn't matter what Barna, what ashram we have. And here is a beautiful, very famous picture. You can see that Shudra is also engaged in his activity, keeping Krishna in the center. Bashya is also engaged in his uh, karma, thinking and keeping Krishna in the center. Chatriya is also acting in his activity, thinking Krishna in the center. And the Brahmin is also Patan Patan, you know, he's, he's, he's engaged in his activity by thinking Krishna, Krishna in the center. So it doesn't matter which Varna we are in, Krishna must be in the picture, must be in the center. And if that is done, then that solve the purpose of Varnasram. That's what the purpose of Varnasram system is. And this verse very beautifully presents that. Atha Puma Bhira Duja Sarasta Varnasram Vibhagsa Shanuti Stasya Dharmasya Shamshidhir Hari Tosh Nam the, the, the final essence is that, that one is working for the pleasure of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So with that, I would like to conclude here. This topic will come again and again, and there are other you know, branch of discussion, such as you know, when uh, you know, Sudra, what are, what are the Sudra can do, and how Sudra can go up, and what are the you know, Brahmans, you know, basically limitations, all of that, you know, we'll discuss. There will be, there will be, you know, more discussion on this uh, topic. I didn't really talk much about uh, ashrama, so we'll talk about ashram also later when uh, <clears throat> we'll have more discussion on Varna and ashram. So with that, I just wanted to kind of lightly touch on this topic and at least present the essence of this system, since the purport is talking about the Varna ashram system, and the essence of this system is that uh, wherever we are, whatever we are, in we have to keep uh, Krishna in our center and then we perform our duty in the <clears throat> uh, in the you know uh, mood of uh, pleasing supreme personality of Godhead Lord Sri Hari. So that's all I had today. We'll give some pause for any questions or any comments or anything that uh, you would like to share. Here is the slide you know that I had uh, and you can see here, you know, in the slide, what we were seeing here, everybody, wherever they are, they are going up. So that's why I picked up this picture because it doesn't matter, you know, how much, how much, you know, we go up. But the, the intent is that, that wherever we are, we are basically trying to step up, going to, you know, up. 
going to go up. And that's, that's the essence, you know, of uh, Varnasram system. And even that's the essence, you know, when we are trying to be devotee also, you know, we have, wherever we are stuck, whatever weakness we have, whatever problems we have in our spiritual life, which is not letting us uh, move up, we should work on that. And essence is that slowly and slowly, slowly and slowly, slowly and slowly, go up, go up, go up, keep on going up. So that's the essence. So in that, in, in that way, Barnasaram gives a very good example that how everybody can uh, proceed to our Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thank you, Hare Krishna. So I'll just give a pause if there is anything. <coughs> Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Dandavat Mataji. Dandavat Pranam Prabhuji. Uh, so in the slide where you mentioned about the 30 qualifications of becoming a human being, uh, there you wrote uh, discrimination. Uh, may I know like in what context you use the word discrimination? Like we should not discriminate uh, among the human beings or should discriminate among something. I did not understand like in what context that word was used. So uh, discrimination basically is uh, <clears throat> what is wanted and what is not wanted. And even in uh, bhakti also, we have to have the power or we have to have the intelligence to uh, discriminate. For example, Madhmadhikari has one of the quality that he is very good in uh, discriminating. You know, he, if he finds somebody uh, who is higher than him, then he will uh, take uh, shelter of that person. If somebody is basically equal to him, then he will be very friendly with him. If somebody is lower, then he will give the association to bring that person up. But if somebody is envious, he will completely ignore him. So Kanista and Madhma. So this is the quality of a Madhma devotee that he has that power of discrimination to understand what is suitable for his spiritual advancement and what is not. So there, discrimination doesn't mean that Brahmin should discriminate Shudra thinking that you know, he's fit or, you know, or he, he, he's, he's low born or he has, he has no basically you know, uh, quality to come or become you know, uh, advanced in Krishna consciousness. Rather, discrimination there means wherever we are, we have to understand and take shelter of one that is good for us or for me to go up in our Krishna consciousness. So that, that discrimination is powerful uh, quality to have. Not, not to basically show that somebody is inferior, rather to find out what is good for you, for me. And we see that quality in Madhmadikari. Madhmadikari has that thing very you know, clear. Kanista would not know. Kanista, the problem with Kanista is that he doesn't know who is advanced devotee. He doesn't know who he is. He has no idea about himself also. So he cannot respect, uh, he cannot recognize if Narad Muni will come to Kanista Adhikari for him, he would not know what exactly it's mean by uh, becoming Narad Muni. But Madhma Adhikari, right there, right there, you know, right there he will say, oh, Narad Muni has come. And Uttama Adhikari, for him there is no difference. So he is in such a higher stage that he sees Krishna everywhere. <laughs> so that's what I would like to say. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Anything? Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hari Prabhu. Thank you for the nice class, Prabhu. So, Prabhu, I had one question. Uh, so, what is the status of women in this Banasama system? Does this apply to them? Talk about it. <laughs> yeah, that's the one of the topic. What is the women of uh, uh, 
in our national system, okay? And uh, just to answer your question, women also have been part of the national system. Okay. Okay. They have always been in the national system. And they also have, uh, if you really look at the technical definition of the uh, basically guna and karma. So based upon their guna and karma, they also fit into this category. They have some, you know, Sudha type quality. They have some uh, Vaisya type quality. They have some Chhatriya type quality. They have some Brahmin type quality. But women also fits into uh, Banatram system. But you will hear something else too. But just. Yeah, and you can... Somebody saying something? Hare Krishna. Hari Bol. Okay. Yeah, so you know, you can see some of the example that when a, a saintly person, especially like Gautam Rishi and other Rishi, when they were in the forest, they were with their wife. So their wife also were, you know, serving, you know, her husband and doing the same thing as he was doing assisting him so 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 women also have this one ashram and they fall exactly into the same category you know you will see some of the women like you know jhansi kirani and some other women that they fought they fought to save the their nation or they went with their you know uh, husband in the uh, battlefield to to fight yes the capacity could be different you know, but but they have shown uh, that quality. So women do fit into the Banasan system. That what you were asking, you were asking something else. Thank you, Thank you Prabhu. That clarifies. So I just had one more follow-up question. Yes. So in the ninth chapter, when Krishna says that uh, Striya Bhaisa Sastha Sudra, so, so why does he categorize in that way? I mean, that's kind of a bit... Uh, um, I mean, it's a, it's a bit controversial or maybe um, a sensitive topic, uh, but I just wanted to understand in this Varnasrama context. Um, so, so why does he categorize like uh, Sri as different from like, you know, uh, the Vaisa, Sudra and Sri. So he's con considering them like a separate from the Varnasrama system. So I just wanted to understand that. Yeah, that, I mean, there, there is basically, you know, uh, uh, series of, you know, if you hear basically series of presentation on Varnasrama Dharma, they, 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 they take citation of uh, that specific part. But, you know, I mean, uh, what my understanding is that, that uh, <clears throat> women, of course, uh, by nature, they are uh, different than men. But what ultimately Banasam system does is that, and we just read into the purport, that doesn't matter even one is out of the Banasam system. You know, if one follows the Dharma, then slowly and slowly, slowly and slowly, slowly and slowly, slowly and slowly, he comes to the stage of the, of the, you know, Vaisnava, uh, you know, platform. So, so how to, how to, so when we say about, uh, you know, uh, some of the name that we just read, the people who are born in waste, people who are, you know, not part of the Banasan system. Are they not sannyasi today? Are they not? Are they not uh, basically uh, doing the things as uh, brahmachari or 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 chhatriya or sannyasa? They are doing it. They, did they uh, take birth as a part of the Banasan system? No. But what happened is that by following the regulatory principles. Dharma slowly and slowly, slowly and slowly, they even cross the Banasam system. So, so by nature, by nature, maybe you know, women is not fitting into it, but that doesn't mean that it stops the progress of the women. Wherever they are, you know, if they take the righteous activity in their life, they can slowly, 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 slowly move up. They can move up and come to the stage of the pure Vaishnava. The essence here is that coming to the stage of being a unalloyed devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And once 
we come to that stage, this, then this Barnasram system doesn't work anyways. This Barnasram, so one should not, so our, and that's what basically, you know, when uh, Mahaprabhu was talking to Ramanan Rai, he said that, forget about this, this is fictitious. This Barnasram system is fictitious. Okay, the same Krishna, the same Krishna when he came at Mahaprabhu. And that's why many devotees in our society, they are good that this Banasam system, we should not waste our time because Mahaprabhu said that this is fictitious. But Mahaprabhu said that, yes, this is only up to the stage where one has not come to the stage to understand that we are the you know, eternal living being as a soul. Yes, I mean, even if, even if somebody by nature is out of this, uh, Barnasram, that doesn't mean that that person does not have a goal, doesn't have a future. So that's why, we, yes, you know, you will see that by nature, maybe women are not falling because of this 30 qualities that we went over, but that's, that doesn't stop, that doesn't stop becoming a pure devotee of the Supreme Personality of God. So that's how we have to see. Did it help you to Yes, Prabhu. No, Prabhu. That's very nice. Thank you. So, Barnasam Dharma Prabhu, Barnasam Dharma basically, we don't have to really think that we must have to go through the Barnasam to become a pure devotee. Oh, just a very beautiful example that we read in the purport. Now, Haridas Thakur, what was his Barna? Why his Sudra? Why his, you know, uh, you know Basya, Chatriya, or Brahmi? Who he was by his birth? It was none of these, but Mahaprabhu said that you are Hari Acharya. So, 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 so that's the point. You know, Barnasram. Yes, if 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 Barnasram is helping us to come to that stage, then it's good. Otherwise, I don't want this Barnasram. At some point, even if I'm the man, I don't want this Barnasram if this is not helping me to come to the essence of it which is accepting the Supreme Lord Hari as our eternal father. If that's not doing, even I am, you know, as a Shudra, I reject it. I want to take the process and just serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is why Mahaprabhu said that this is fictitious. This is, this is a socialist, you know, sir. This is okay if it's working for you. If it's not working for you, don't too much on that. Rather, go up. That's what Mahaprabhu is saying. This is good. Ramana Rai, Age Kaho, you know, in Bangla. Next still, what is that? Unless and until Ramana, uh, Ramana uh, <coughs> you know, he came to the stage. Uh, he said, okay. yes, so, yes, you know, this is okay, but, but Age Kaho, Age is the word. We have to take the pure devotion, the Supreme Lord. And many people basically take the instance of Ramanand Rai and comes that, oh, this Barnasram is just a waste of time. That is why even in our society, Prabhu, there is conflict. There is a group of devotees who says that, you know, we don't have to waste too much time on the Barnasram. And, you know, Prabhupada also said many times that my 50% of the responsibility is, you know, not done. Unless so we have to, I don't know, I mean, there is some gray area here. But you know, in my opinion, what I think is that the most important thing is that that Barnasam system <clears throat> is only a system to bring us to the pure devotion. Okay, so if there is nothing, then can we conclude here or anybody has anything? Anything, uh, Bhopal Prabhu? No, Prabhu, that was very good. So also, like it is said that in the age of Kali, most of the people are actually born Sudras. Yeah. So we, been, uh, we don't even have to look at this Barnasam system. So yeah, as you said, so uh, as long as we are in the path of devotional service, then uh, once you go become Vaisnav, then we can just discard this Barnasam system. Yeah. Irrespective of the, you know, uh, birth and uh, all the other activities. So, yes, yeah. yes. Yes, thank you. Hare Krishna. So uh, one thing I would like to uh, uh, announce that uh, we are starting a Bhakti Shastri course and uh, I'll be the coordinator for the course and I can tell you uh, 
devotees that I myself uh, did with VIHG. And at some point when devotee <coughs> were working on Bhakti Shastri, trying to come with the curriculum, many devotees put their thought and then, you know, uh, VIHG yeah. their curriculum. And also many places, the temples are doing Bhakti Shastri course and they have their own curriculum. But I can tell you that many, many devotees, they get discouraged because the online thing is that <clears throat> once you enroll into the program, you are part of the program and they send you <clears throat> all the material. And then you have to personally read, you have to listen to the lectures and then, you know, do the homework. And, you know, whenever you want to give the exam, you ask them. For oh, the, uh, all of that overall <clears throat> has become kind of little bit discouraging for the people and many devotee they get registered and they live in the middle of it so you know the thing is that now slowly and slowly there are many small small centers for the uh, bhakti center and iskon board of education they are basically trying to promote it they are trying to have centers at the temple so that the local devotee can talk to somebody in person and they have you know course curriculum that they're very well defined and they have said that these are the minimum requirement if devotee meets uh, these requirements then they are they are you know qualified and they should be given the certificate so we have basically that final you know curriculum that board of uh, uh, examination has given and i'm going to follow that and the certificate that we get here either for IVC or for Bhakti Shastri is non different than getting it from VIHC from anywhere else. I myself have worked you know, for quite a few years to get that certification. So I just wanted to tell you that you know this is going to be very, very uh, interesting and I'm going to invest myself too much into that because uh, you know we'll have discussions like that and I'll be presenting the topics from Bhagavad Gita, mm -hmm. like this very similar you know, type of discussion. And then yeah, all okay. the presentation I'll be sending you know, to you. But and you, you, can, you, you can go over it and then we'll have exams. So it's going to be very, very, you know, kind of, you know, nice way in a very synergistic you know, environment, I would say, we are going to study uh, Bhakti Shastri so that you do not feel like that, oh, I have tons to carry. Rather, we work together we learn of course the goal is to learn and that is why i'm going to invest myself too much into it and do the preparation and come up with the slides and everything and share with you so that the learning stays you know where it has to be and then at the same time we qualify and get the certificate so bhakti sastri is going to <clears throat> be starting in a week or so i got the response and i'm going to send email asking devotee to create a skype id so that we can start having the discussion and then also uh, i'm planning to have the idc somewhere around october or november time because idc is the mandatory requirement if you would like to get the initiated so these two courses please do not think that you know ramacharya is not qualified you know wh why we have to take the you know a lecture from ramacharya i can go and take somewhere else i just want to let you know that there is no difference there is no difference at all you know i have been kind of you know given the blessing to sign on the certificates and help devotee to you know uh, get the bhakti sastri degree and this is something that also i would like to do so please help me and you know be part of that program if you are you know desiring to take the bhakti sastri all of us should take the bhakti sastri and at least have some basic you know learning of our shastra so just wanted to uh, share with all of you. Also, I'm going to create a YouTube uh, you know, account where all the lectures that I have been giving, I'm going to post it. Because I have been seeing that some of the things that we talk here, we are seeing that that keep on coming. So if you have something that you would like to hear more, all of these lectures I'm going to post and you can go. And we have to learn together and we have to serve, we have to preach. Thank you, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, everybody. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Pranam, everybody. Thank you, Pranam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Hare. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Bol. So I'm going to uh, stop now. Hare Bol.
Thank you. Rajana Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Ravi Prabhu, I'm going to stop now, okay? Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.